Hello, everyone. Welcome to this presentation on Zebra. My name is Salu Sali. I'm the intern that work on this project. I will be taking us through Zebra overview. This presentation is divided into three sections. We have the first section, which is Zebra overview, and then the second section, so we built an app for Zebra. And then finally, the third session, Zebra demo and use cases. So what is Zebra? Zebra stands for Zoe Embedded Browser for RMF and APIs. It is now an incubator project under Zoe. It was initially part of the 2020 OMP mentorship project, which was titled Zoe Person Engine for SMF or RMF post-processor report. Our mission, the mission of Zebra is to provide reusable industry compliant JSON formatted RMF or SMF data records so that many other independent software vendors can use uh, and other users can exploit them using open source software in many ways. So the problem statement, RMF data is critical data point for IBM Z system programming, capacity planning and performance analysis. But almost every independent software vendor tools are, are regenerate their way of past data in closed source and prevent reuse or sharing of knowledge of many years of experience. So there are some free of charge performance analysis tools based on RMF, but lacking some desired capabilities of many modern open source data analysis tools are very hard to integrate with open source software. So our design goal, our design goal was simply to generate open source JSON formatted RMF data through Zoe Manage APIs to share and reuse them. It can help system programmers, capacity performance analyzers use more open source utilities out there. Perhaps creates a knowledge base to share among Z performance SMEs and users. For example, we have Bob who is a capacity planner. All Bob wants is to understand the health and capacity of his systems by graph, as well as feeding and storing data in various format. We have Tom who is an operations manager. So as a user, Tom wants to manage his mainframe capacity and make correct decisions based on the capacity trend reports and analysis generated by commonly used tools. We have John, who is an IT manager. So as a user, John wants to manage and understand the overall perform IO performance using many uh, using his own programming and connect to storage management tools. We have Elizabeth, who is an app developer. As a user, Elizabeth would like to create utility, your utility providing single pane of view for multiple architecture server resources using commonly understood data source. So Zebra architecture, this is the currently implemented Zebra architecture. It starts when a request is sent from the Zebra app to DDS. DDS will now process a, a return XML file to Zebra. Zebra will pass the SML file using one of its three passes into a JSON formatted data. The JSON data can be presented to the user using the browser or the Zoe API catalog. The JSON data can also be stored into MongoDB for later retrieval. The JSON data can be converted into Promet uh, Promet uh, Prometheus client. Uh, using Prometheus client can be converted into Prometheus metrics. Then this will be stored in Prometheus server. And then finally, it will be presented as a chart using Grafana. This is a sample of Zebra JSON formatted. This is just a one-to-one -one mapping between the XML file returned by the DDS and then the past data returned by Zebra. So the most important thing in Zebra first is to configure the app before you can use it. So the Zebra configuration has been modified to accommodate more than one helper. You can add configuration, you can add one or more ADS configurations into Zebra. You can add this into the configuration file to point to DDS running on a, on a separate helper on your mainframe. That's the helper one. And then you can also add another, the second configuration to point to another active DDS on a separate helper. We have um, the Zebra endpoint structure. So we have also structured our endpoints to this format. First, you will need to enter the IP and port of the running Zebra instance. Then you will specify the API version you want to use, and then the system ID. This system ID represents the helper name you have stored in your zcompig file. And then you select the RMF monitor you would like to retrieve report from. And then finally, you specify the report name. 
a report that have extra parameters, you can add the parameter and it is value to the request. Then we have the Zebra Prometheus metrics. Zebra expose Prometheus metrics, which can be used to connect Grafana to Zebra through Prometheus. So users can now collect metrics for one or more helpers of their choice and pull Grafana charts for the expose metrics. So Zebra provides this type of metrics based on the format, the SYS, the system ID, underscore the value type, and then underscore the helper name. The value type can be TOU. TOU stands for total utilization. So all, zip, all Prometheus metrics containing this uh, TOU value type represent total utilization values. So those containing the EFU value type represent the effective utilization. Those for the MSU does the same. And then we have the BC for the percentage of maximum general purpose processor capacity spent on behalf of a group or class. And then we have the channels and then we have the job. So there's a lot of information to discuss about Zebra, but time is not on our side. So you can get more information by visiting the GitHub repo for the source code and documentation. You can also join Open Mainframe project. Your comment and, and feedbacks will be shaping next code delivery for Zebra. And if you also, if you use RMF uh, or SMF, please you can join our biweekly meeting on Thursdays at 8 a.m. Eastern time. You can also visit our demo site to take a tour of Zebra, which is at HTTPS zebra talk to the mainframe.com. So I will now like to give a demo. At the moment, Zebra is not configured, so I cannot use UI or the uh, Zebra endpoints to retrieve any data. I first have to configure it using this configuration panel. I decided to skip some steps like logging in just to save time. So at the moment, there is no configuration file available, so I can click this button to generate a configuration file. As I can see here, it says Zebra file, as a config file created successfully. So I press OK. This will refresh, and now I can see it is welcoming me to the configuration panel. So I will now click on DDS. So Zebra has now created a configuration using a dummy helper, which it names helper one. I will need to edit this and also edit other parameters as well so that I can use this uh, helper details in my Zebra. So all these parameters has been explained in our documentation. So for example, I can just update. So it says helper one details has been updated. I can also add a new helper using this click me button. So I can specify the SYS ID of the helper and then input all other parameters. Yes, I can now save this. So it says DBLP details save successfully. So I have a running Zebra instance with two helpers added into the Z config file. The first one is the RPRT and the second one is DBLP. So I can select an helper. And then this is asking me for report title for RMF3. So once I click try it, it will try to retrieve the RMF3 report, CPC report in this case for me. So this is what I'm talking about when I was discussing about the API endpoint structure. First, you need to specify the version, and then you can specify the SYS ID, which you have already stored in your zconfig file. Then you specify the monitor, is it RMF monitor three? And then you specify the report type you want. So finally, we can see we have a processor report here. And then I would like to talk about the Prometheus metrics. In this case, I'm exposing Prometheus metrics for both, for both the SYS IDs, for both the DDS I have in my zconfig file. So this will now, I will now like to hand over to the second presenter for the second part of this presentation. Thank you very much. Hi everyone. So I am here to talk about um, Zebra's interaction with different Zoe components and how it can talk to different Zoe components and how it can fit into different areas of Zoe um, that we've been working on in the last couple of months. So firstly, Zebra is amongst other things and at a really high level, just a set of APIs that collect and process RMF1 and RMF3 data and present that in a meaningful JSON format 
for people to then read, use however they want. This means it can pretty easily and with slight configuration um, be attached to the Zoe API mediation layer, which I'm showing now. This is the backbone of every Zoe component. It acts as a high level proxy that reroutes API calls to the appropriate service. So you can have lots of different services running uh, on Unix system services and the mediation layer takes all the requests, sends them to the services that you want, gets responses from them and send them back to the user. And we can add the Zebra APIs behind that. So we can start Zebra on Unix system services, which can, which can be done because it's just a Node.js application, can be done quite simply. Um, you create a config file that you register with the mediation layer, telling, you, telling them the routes and where the files are, etc. And then it actually appears within the API catalog. So if I click API catalog, it will ask me to log in unless I already have. There we go, sign in. Here we go, so we can see all the tiles, one of which is the Zebra parsing engine. So they're the Zebra APIs running now within the mediation layer and accessible through the mediation layer. And that offers loads of benefits by itself. We can use features like single sign-on. We've got all the authentication already there. Uh, as you saw, I had to sign in to get to here. There is logging, so like global logging, things like that. And there are only a few features that we can use. I can then click Zebra Passing Engine and we can look at the API details. And this loads the Swagger documentation for the Zebra APIs. So we can look through here, we can see all of the routes that are available. There's lots of uh, information here, um, but you can see all of the APIs available, all of the routes, sorry, available. Not only can you see the routes, you can see all of the parameters they take, whether they're query parameters here, uh, some take arguments within the request body. You can actually see the HTTP um, method being used. These are all get requests. Um, but Swagger also goes a step further. You can click a route and you can see all the responses that you can get. You can see the response codes, what they mean, the messages. You can also see all the parameters that it takes. In this case, we're sending a URL query parameter. Uh, for the title of the report and you can also click try it out and you can customize in this case the name of the report that you want will stick with CPC and I can click execute and I get the curl command that you can run to get the same response you've got the request URL that you can run to get the same response and then you scroll down you actually get the re response code as 200 which is all good and the response back which is a JSON object and if we just have a very quick look through this you can see the the start time, the end time, title of the report. Start time and end time being RMF3 collects data every, in this case, it will be what, 100 seconds? And you can see those 100 seconds start and end dates, times, etc. You can then see all the data you get, get, get back. If I scroll down to the table section, you can see all the different LPARs and loads of information, including you know, you've got CPU, um, effective utilization, you've got total utilization, things like that. Um, again, loads of information back in a JSON format, which is really, really useful for other applications. So these, as you can see from the request URL, this is the mediation layer address. You then append certain routes afterwards to access the Zebra APIs, which shows, you know, we go to the mediation layer, then we go off to a different service that comes back to the mediation layer and that sends the response back to the user. So another really cool thing that we can do with this now that it's running behind the mediation layer is access this data through other services and use it in lots of really cool ways. Now, Alex is going to talk over some of these uses after I'm done, uh, but I wanted to show you a purely Zoe focused use case that shows a more extensibility of Zoe and how this can be used in a cool and useful way um, for people working on a mainframe. So bearing in mind, this is all an example of an on-platform use case for Zebra. Alex will show you off-platform afterwards, after I'm done. But this is all, you've got the mediation layer running on a mainframe, you've got the APIs running on a mainframe, you've then got 
is Zoe Desktop, which I'm going to show you now running on a mainframe. So the Zoe Desktop is another server-side component of Zoe, displaying a desktop-like user interface within a browser. The UI is extensible, allowing for plugins, applications to be created and run within that desktop. So if I'm just going to switch over, so this is actually running on my local host, but this does run on a mainframe. And I've created a plugin that grabs the data made available from those APIs and formats them and shows them in a graph like format. Um, so if I click the bottom left, as you can see, this resembles a desktop. We've got the, you know, the user notifications, the time on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, we've got an applications menu here. And I've got a few applications loaded in, one of which is called Zebra. So I'm going to click that and you will see some graphs appear with live uh, data as of now. So this data is not displayed in a JSON format, although that is how it started. It's shown in hopefully readable and meaningful graphs, which again shows the use case uh, of, of this example. So this first graph we've got three to show is LPAR utilization. You can see all the LPARs listed at the bottom and we can show physical total utilization and effective total utilization. That's a mouthful. So again, they're customizable. You can you can click the the LPARs you don't want to see. Uh, things like this. There we go. And hover over and see the, the numbers. And if I scroll down, you can see CPU utilization. Uh, again, you can get rid of it completely if you'd want to. Completely customizable. And again, we have got job utilization as well, which is the job usage time. For example, let's get rid of these two uh, tool. Oh, that, the customization isn't working on that one. But there we go. Um, so yeah, just another way you can use that data and format it in a way that suits you and customize your Zoe instance to sort of make use of the information made available through the awesome APIs. So again, to reiterate, this is a purely on-platform scenario. We've got everything running on the same mainframe, uh, accessible through different ways, through the Swagger documentation and also through this uh, desktop plugin. Alex is now gonna run over some off-platform use cases and how that has other advantages as well. Cheers, thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew, for a nice presentation and demo. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Alex Kim. work with Vicom Infinity. So you can see here that Celeste explained very well about the how you can take advantage of uh, the API, such as uh, CPC report or, you know, system information that shows all the workloads that are running on this current system, the RMF, you know, three reports or um, RMF1 reports with the CPU or workload report and other APIs that we are enabled in Zebra. Uh, the first example is uh, something called Grafana. Uh, Grafana is another open source software that you can download and install. Uh, I created, pre-populated uh, some, you know, records that running on our mainframe. And uh, we can start with this panel. Each panel that you know populates these different values from Zebra APIs, and you can select the the intervals into uh, perioded into um, one hour or last five minutes, or you know seven days of the data if it was collected for that long. So I'll just show you uh, last three hours of data. Then then you can see that we have. Um, the, our current system LPAR utilizations. If you click on the label, it can turn on and off to toggle the uh, display. So you can see we have uh, multiple LPARs. I can click on ZVM prod LPAR. Uh, our system is a pretty low utilized for the, for the moment. And you can see the different LPARs, US LPARs. This is our you know test system LPARs. And you can see you know at some point it goes to uh, four four and a half percent. Uh, you know, CPU utilization. We have two CPUs. You'll be interested watching here in the IBM DSAK response time for the DASD. 
mm. and uh, that's the IO ops. This is something special uh, that I added myself to demonstrate how useful could be uh, when you combine uh, Zebra APIs with other system APIs such as you know uh, IBM's disk subsystem uh, that API is provided by um, IBM that you can you can download this uh, guide that RESTful API guide for DSAK and I'll go over some use cases. Let me go back to seven day period view and I was I was thinking about looking at this you know this guy O that had um picked and this day which is you know September third uh around eight o'clock PM. I'm curious why this was high. You know, the regular IOPS, our system is very low utilized, so normally no IO is happening. But this time there was about 3,000 IO per second. Uh, let me see, was it read or write? So it was most likely read only um, driven IOPS. So what was driven by, um, you know, what was driving this IOPS for disk? Um, and I'm trying to see if there was any, any LPARS that has a similar um, high utilization. So I can see there's a red part, the similar time, you can see the pattern of similar, uh, uh, you know, utilization is going up. So let me check that. Yeah, that is our LPRT part. So what's going on in this LPRT part? Let's dive in. So if you go back here, the workload report, that is our uh, LPRT part service class reports. So I can see that there is a purple bar is a little high and a similar pattern as the um, you know IO ops, uh, this guy ops, and also same, similar to our you know, LPRT LPAR utilization. So I want to know what that is. Oh, that is batch. So basically, during this time, uh, around you know right after eight o'clock until let's say eight thirty-five in the evening. There was a batch shop that has been driving uh, this IOs mostly read, and of course, uh, you know DSAK. You know our case, you know 8900F, which is flash disk, has lots of cache, so it's not really you know driving response time high because it's mostly in cache. We looked at the Grafana use case where real-time data RMF3 reports can be plotted through the uh, Grafana. Another case is uh, MongoDB. We are writing a real-time report again, RMF3 report into MongoDB uh, sampling intervals. So I wanted to introduce something called uh, Vicom Performance Analysis Tool, uh, in short VPAD. Uh, we are using this tool for our own customers for capacity studies and performance analysis. When you can see here the in the menu we have a zebra, uh, and you can specify the R, uh, URL for a zebra. In our case, we're using our own system's data, and you can uh, actually take the RMF1 reports. So extraction is completed, and you can see here um, save it save into these directories. If I click on the analysis function, then you can see uh, the graphs that this so i'm gonna take a look at the uh mongodb database from september 3rd around five o'clock to nine o'clock so let's point it to the target url for the mongodb and i'm just gonna write into uh data po data point here and i have to propagate and then run it going to take a while. Alright, extraction complete. And I'm going to read it here. Um, again, uh, I have to change the data point for minimum utilization graphs. And you can see here a little bumpy bump over here that uh, has a the little higher utilization than, than usual. And also look at the workload report can see a uh, little better than before the picture is 
better than prior historical report because we are taking the measurement uh, every 100 seconds. You can see here data point increase every 100 second, and you can see here primary, you know, driven the uh, utilization driven by batch batch jobs, batch type computer two or batch type computer three. So if I click on this to analyze it, you can see here, you know, some analysis functions to four. So this was a use case of using Zebra APIs that is being written by MongoDB, written to MongoDB, so that you can take the you know data back uh, from the almost real time data anytime you want. It's very short intervals. It's, this is very useful when you kind of try to analyze the performance issues in short time period, like the online transactions, so that you don't have to really change the R map. You know, one report. Some, some people change the RMF1 report into, you know, one minute intervals. In this case, it's being written in MongoDB, you know, every short period that you specify in RMF3, so you don't have to do it again with the RMF1. So this was another use case. The last use case I wanted to show you is a very interesting one. We are using Watson Assistant from IBM, and I try to integrate into a chatbot. A lot of people use Slack for uh, com communicating with other team members. And I try to show it here, uh, create a chatbot for uh, Zebra. It's called Zebra Mythsbot. And let's say, you know, I want to see the alpha utilization uh, for past seven days. Send me alpha report for seven days. Then this ch chatbot will contact the Zebra and, and it's, you know, Grafana API is being used for, you know, generating this report. And you can see easily that this, you know, utilization is uh, outstanding for this prod L part for GVM in this state. And you can also dive into workload reports. Send me workload report for seven days. And then, of course, going back to Zebra APIs and also going to the uh, Grafana APIs, you can see the current LPR, TLPAR that has a higher utilization in, in September 7th, which is today, <laughs> around mid-time. Um, this was the demos that I prepared for this presentation. And now we're going to take some questions. If you have more in real time or uh, anytime you have questions, come to our you know Zebra meetings or uh, leave a you know a question in our GitHub. Thank you very much for wa watching, and uh, I hope you enjoy the conference. Thank you.